astronomers get a very different view of the sky using light. And yet another view of the sky using radio waves, which are very low frequency electromagnetic waves. So we want to do the same with gravitational waves. We want to listen to lower frequency sounds of the universe than the ones we can hear from the Earth. However, as we all know, we have many problems here down, down here on the Earth. We have taxes, <laughs> bad weather, hair loss. <laughs> of those three, bad weather is actually a significant factor in the search for gravitational waves. It's because our detectors are so sensitive, they can pick up lots of things that we don't want them to. And weather changes are one of them. Not thunder, not lightning, but the change in gravity caused by the weather. The fact is that the lower pitched sounds of gravitational waves are quieter than the low pitched sounds of the Earth in gravity. For example, the weather system has to be. Starting around 2020, we will all. Got behind this one, so I'm going to finish this and then I'm going to talk. Uh, a weather system passing over the Earth creates changes in gravity in our gravitational wave detectors that would be bigger than the changes we'd expect from distant black holes at low frequencies. So we need to get away from the Earth, and uh, this is how we plan to Also be able to measure gravitational waves in space. Lisa will listen deeper into the universe and farther back in time than ever before. Lisa will be built by Europe and the USA working closely together. By going out into empty space, LISA can be made much bigger than the Earth-based detectors. This allows LISA to pick up waves of much longer wavelength, which are emitted by much larger objects, such as giant black holes. In order to make such sensitive observations, the LISA spacecraft will create inside themselves the quietest places in the solar system. Only if we exclude all local disturbances, can we record the sounds made by distant beasts? This technology of stillness will be tested in 2012 by the LISA Pathfinder spacecraft. With a three ultra wide spacecraft in a triangle five million kilometers on the side, communicating among themselves with lasers, LISA becomes the most sensitive detector ever built. LISA will hear a cacophony of sounds from all over the universe from white dwarf stars in our Milky Way to the roaring elephants of the giant black hole systems far away and far back in time. Lisa might even record the earliest black holes or even the Big Bang. Even the mysterious dark energy might leave its mark in Lisa's observations. Lisa's gravity measuring technology could eventually be used to monitor the Earth too. A future generation network of Earth orbiting satellites could measure changes in the Earth's gravity so small that they could register in real time the changes in rocks deep underground that might signal an imminent earthquake or volcano. And just as Einstein's fundamental studies of atoms led eventually to the laser and all its applications from DVD players to medicine, so also may Einstein's theory of gravitational waves inspire new measurement systems with an unimagined range of applications. So you hear 
the crossing belt changed pitch quickly, just as you passed it. So Lisa will locate its centers in the same way, through the change in pitch as it circles the sun. So our gravitational wave detectors use the same old tricks that our ears have always used to listen to and locate sounds. The tricks may be old, but gravitational waves are new, and nobody has yet detected them. The study of gravity, however, goes back to antiquity, but nobody had a good theory of waves until Einstein. Newton, of course, showed in the 17th century that gravity was the reason that the planets circle the sun, and today we understand it governs the universe. Einstein recognized that gravity is, in fact, the curvature of space, more precisely, of space and time. Space is no longer just the arena in which things happen, it's an active participant. And Einstein asked himself, what happens when stars circle each other? How does gravity change when the stars move? And how do these changes affect other bodies around him? Einstein, of course, already knew that nothing could move faster than light. Therefore, he concluded that any changes in gravity had to take the form of waves moving through space at the speed of light. Any theory of gravity has to have waves. Einstein's gravitational waves are ripples in the curvature of space-time. Space, of course, is everywhere. That means that gravitational waves go everywhere. They can't be shut out, they can't be screened, they can't be blocked. They are therefore our best messengers from the dark and hidden universe. Every acceleration would produce a gravitational wave. We can, however, only catch the strongest of the the ones that are emitted by the fastest and the most massive objects in the universe, from black holes, neutron stars, exploding stars, and the Big Bang. And even these waves can only just be detected, because their sources are typically very far away, and the waves are very weak by the time they reach us. Okay, I want to do another demonstration now. <coughs> 